What is happening guys? This is Matt from Flow Guys, and in today's video, we are going to show you our process for setting up redirects for a brand new Webflow website. Let's get into it. So the tools we're gonna to be using today are Google Sheets. So you could use this or you could use uh, Excel or any kind of equivalent spreadsheet. Software, you just need to be able to import a CSV file. And we are gonna be using a tool called Screaming right. Frog. Now, Screaming Frog is an SEO spider. Um, it's really, really useful. It's not free. Um, I think there is a free trial, but the license cost is well worth it, uh, especially if you're an agency and doing this for a lot of clients. It's mo way more than we'll just be using it for today. You can do all kinds of SEO type audits and things. So really recommend it. If you haven't used it, check it out. But we're gonna be using that today and Obviously, we're going to be looking at the two sites that we're setting up the redirects for. So we've got the current site, which is the live site. So in this case, the site URL is exec.co.uk. And we have our new site, which is the Webflow version. So, and the URL for that, exec-dev.webflow.io. So the first thing we need to do is copy our live URL into Screaming Frog. Now, if you've got this set up as the default, you will have a box here to input a URL. If you haven't got that, you just need to go to your mode menu and check that you are in spider mode. Paste that in there and we click the start button. And now this goes on a crawl of the website and follows all the links that it finds on the page and any links in those subsequent pages and basically creates a big list of all the URLs that it finds within the site. Now, these will mainly be page URLs, but you may find uh, links to images, JavaScript files, anything like that, any kind of links that it's found within the site, it will pick up. Now, we're only interested in page links, so we want to filter this list, um, which we can do so by this little filter here, and we can just say HTML. So we only want links to HTML pages. And we're also focusing on this internal tab here. There's lots of different tabs here to show you different bits of information, but we're only, again, interested in internal links. We're not interested in external links. So once we filter that down, we can export this whole list to a CSV file. So I'm just gonna put a name in there so I know what this file is for. I'll save that to my downloads folder, and I'm gonna go back to Google Sheets. Now this is just a blank sheet that I've created. So I'm going to import, upload, and then from my downloads folder, I'm gonna put in that CSV file. I'm gonna choose replace current sheet, and then import data. And then we have all the list of URLs within the sheet here. Now, as the purpose of this process is to identify URLs on the new site that you're about to launch that don't exist, but do exist on the current live site, what we need to do is create equivalent URLs to these, but for the new site so that we can then test those URLs to make sure that they are valid. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna select everything in the sheet and we are gonna do a find and replace. And what we're gonna look for is the URL of the new site. So we don't need the whole URL, we just need the first part of it. So we are actually gonna start with the two forward slashes. So I'll tell you why in a minute, but for now, let's just put in the domain name of the live site. Now, the reason we start with the two forward slashes is to make sure that we don't accidentally match any um, further subdomains that might be in the list that we're not interested in. We're only interested in the ones on the live site. Um, and we also don't put the HTTPS in because sometimes you might find there's uh, non-secure links, HTTP links um, that might be on the existing site that would have been picked up. So we do wanna match those as well um, because that's important if they're if they're linked, they're likely to be in Google and we wanna make sure there's a equivalent redirect in place. Now we're gonna replace those 
in the same way, we're going to start with the two forward slashes and we want to use this time the Webflow URL. So in this case, exec-dev.webflow.io. So we place that into there. So we're finding the existing domain name with the two forward slashes in front and replacing it with the Webflow staging domain name with the two forward slashes. Once we've done that, click replace all and it said, there you go, it replaced 515 instances. Now we want to download that as a CSV file. So I've downloaded that to my downloads folder and then we can switch back to Screaming Frog and this time we need to change the mode to list mode. A little prompt there just to, to check that you're happy that it's going to clear the existing results. And we're fine with that. And this time, rather than having a, a box to paste in a URL, we have a button to upload a file. So I am going to import the sheet that I've just exported, the CSV file I've just exported from Google Sheets and open that. And that is going to read that file and pick out all the links that it finds within it. So you can see it's found it's processed 515 URLs, uh, as we saw in the Google Sheet. Uh, but you'll also notice that there were actually 260 duplicates within that 515. So it's removed those. So great. Click OK. And it shows us all our URLs. Now, what I usually do, first of all, is just to click on the address bar here and it will sort these um, by name order. What it should do anyway. There we go. So that's now put them in alphabetical order. It just makes it easier so that you can see um, groupings of uh, URLs. Now what we're focusing on here is going to be the status code. Now anything, any of these URLs with a status code of 200 means that those URLs do exist on the new site. So we have already created pages on the new site that have the same URL structure as the old one. So that's great. We don't need to set up any redirects. Any of the old links from the old site, once we launch the new site, they will continue working. So we're happy with that. The important ones are the 404s, i.e. these URLs are resulting in a 404 not found error. And this is where we need to make sure that there's a redirect in place so that we don't get a 404. Now to make it a bit easier to see all the 404s, we have a response codes tab up here. If we click that, we can now filter all these pages by their response code. So we can say only show us the ones with the 400 errors. So there you go. We've actually only got out of all those uh, URLs, we've only got 38, 38 URLs that need redirects putting in place. Now, once again, if I sort this by name, it is going to show us any particular groups of pages. So you can see straight away here, there's several under the product dash categories uh, URL structure. And there's also quite a lot under the product structure. So when I look at that, that tells me that most likely um, I'm going to be able to set up a wildcard redirect to match all of those because it looks like um, we probably, I mean, the new site is most likely going to have equivalent pages to these. Um, so there's probably a quite simple reason why we're getting a 404 on this. So if we just actually go to the new site, so let's pick one of the, let's say meeting chairs. If we go to our new Webflow site, let's see if we can find the equivalent page. So where we get da, 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 storage wall, operating chairs, meeting chairs. There you go. So we do have an equivalent page on this new site, but for whatever reason, the URL is slightly different. So I can see straight away here that the difference is we are using product dash category on the new site, whereas on the old site, they're using product dash categories. So that's the only difference. So in that case, we can set up a wildcard redirect within Webflow um, that will match all of those in one hit. 
Um, so that's one redirect to address all of those 24 404s. So as you can see, it's not going to be too much of a task. Again, I can see there's a lot under, there's a couple under product, there's a lot, quite a few under products. So again, they're probably going to be the same situation. We can set up one redirect um, to make sure that all these address, uh, URLs are redirected in one hit. So out of these 38 URLs, I'm probably actually only going to need a handful of redirects set up in Webflow. Now, as you set up your redirects in Webflow, um, you can either do them one at a time uh, and then come back to Screaming Frog and then just click the start button again and it will run that crawl again on those same set of URLs. Uh, and you can then double check that hopefully if you've put the redirect in correctly, the URL disappears from this list. So your ultimate goal is to be able to run the crawl here and get no results in this list. And then you know that you have successfully set up redirects for all the 404 URLs. Now let's just go into Webflow and we can show you how to do a redirect. I'm sure you probably have done this before, but if you haven't, let's um, have a little look and we can show you how that's done. So let's find my new site. You go into the settings of the site and then under the publishing tab, we have our redirect section. So we can see that there's just one in there at the moment. So let's take one of these examples in the Screaming Frog. Let's go for uh, this. Let's again sort this by name doesn't seem to remember that each time you do a crawl. So let's say this brand's one, Brands Arcello. Now you can actually copy straight from Screaming Frog, you can copy that URL. So if you just right click it, copy. So I can now go into here and I can paste that into the old path box. Now Webflow does not want to see the whole URL, including the domain name, they just want the path. So it's everything from the first forward slash after the domain name. So we delete that and then let's see if we can find an equivalent page on here. Um, brands, there's a brand section here. Have we got our cello in there? No, we can't see our cello. So at this point, we would probably check with the client that they do or don't want our cello included on that brands page. Maybe there was just an oversight. Maybe um, we missed something in the content document and it should be in there. Or maybe they don't support that brand anymore and they're not interested in having it on that page. So for the purposes of this demo, let's assume that. And let's say we'll just redirect to the brands page instead. So we go back to our Webflow site and we paste that path into the redirect path. We add that redirect. And then importantly, after you've added a redirect, you need to publish the site. So we'll just publish that again, just to the staging domain. And once it's done, we'll go back to our Screaming Frog and bearing in mind that we had 38 URLs here in our list. Hopefully, if we run this again, we will only have 37 and this one will no longer be in the list. And there you go, the crawl has completed. And there you go, only 37 in the list. And if we order that by name again, we can see our brand's URL that was previously a 404 is no longer present. So great, we've ticked that one off. Now let's do an example of a wildcard redirect. So what that means is we're gonna try and match not a single URL, but we're gonna try and match a whole group of URLs by looking for a commonality between them. So in this case, everything under the product categories collection slug, if you like, um, we want to redirect that to product dash category, but keep the resulting path on the end. So let's copy one of those. We'll go back into Webflow, back down to our redirects. We'll paste that in, remove the first part up to the first forward slash after the domain name. And this time 
We don't want to match only the acoustics one. We want to match everything that starts with forward slash product dash categories forward slash and then anything after that. And the way we do that is we use a regular expression. So what we do is we group a set of characters that we want to match that we can then reuse that group in the redirect to path. To create the group, we use a set of brackets and anything within that group that matches, we can then reuse. And we are going to use a full stop and a star. And what that means is a full stop will match any character and a star will match any number of that character. So full stop star or period star is going to match any number of any character after that forward slash and keep it in a group that we can then reuse in the redirect path. So we go back over here and we know that our new collection slug is product dash category. We do a forward slash and then to reuse that group of characters, we use the dollar sign and then a number. Now, if you had multiple groups in here, so you wanted to match that and then another forward slash and then match um, further parts of that URL, you could use dollar sign two, dollar sign three to insert those particular groups into the resulting URL. Now, there's one other thing that we have to be mindful of when we use a redirect URL, a wildcard redirect. We need to make sure that we escape certain characters. So there's certain characters that are used for, by the regular expression, but if we use them within the rest of the URL, then they're not going to be matched properly. So in this example, a hyphen is a character that can be used in a regular expression. So we need to tell Webflow to ignore that character or not use it as part of the regular expression and instead use it as an actual character that's going to get matched on the URL. And the way we do that is we put a percent sign before that. So if you go into the Webflow University and look at their documentation for wildcard redirects, it will give you a full list of the characters that you need to escape. But it's just one thing to be cautious of. Um, if for whatever reason we didn't have a hyphen in there, then we wouldn't need to do that. But because we do, we need to escape that character. So let's add that redirect path. Publish the site. And then we'll go back to Screaming Frog, rerun our crawl, and with a bit of luck, we'll have got rid of a big chunk of those 404. Fantastic, there you go. We're down to 17 404s straight away from the from the 37 that we had previously, just from adding one wildcard redirect. And straight away, I can look at this and I can see that there are several more that we could do in exactly the same way, i.e. the products ones. If I sort these by name to put them all in a group, um, then there you go, there's one, two, three, yeah, so there's a good chunk there straight away that chances are one wildcard redirect set up will tick all, all of those. And then I've literally got like eight left to do. So even though that initial crawl came up with a whole bunch of 404s and it looks like an overwhelming task, actually it's not that bad. Um, so yeah, that is how we, that's the process we use. You may have a different process if so. Let us know in the comments. It'd be great to know the way you do things. Um, but that's how we do it. Hopefully it's helpful and um, we'll see you in the next one.